Hi there, Accountancy students. So welcome dito sa ating discussion for Philippine Accounting Standards 1 or PAS 1. Okay, a quick review for this uh, standard is that Philippine Accounting Standards 1 or PAS 1 is a Philippine adaptation of the International Accounting Standards 1 or IAS 1. Okay, so for this discussion, we're going to focus four matters. Okay. So we have to discuss the basic concepts of PAS 1, the elements of financial statements, profit or loss statements, and statement of financial position. Okay? So starting with the basic concepts of PAS 1, the descriptive title is Presentation of Financial Statements. So by the name itself, alam nyo na agad kung ano ang nilalaman ng PAS 1. Okay? Uh, PAS 1, pag nakita ang title na yan, dapat nasa isip. Okay? It provides um, provisions on the presentation of financial statements on how we're going to prepare and present financial statements. So the objective, according to paragraph 1, it describes the basis of presentation for general purpose financial statements to ensure comparability of the financial statements within and uh, the entity and those financial statements of other entities. It set out... Uh, Requirements for the presentation of financial statements, guidelines for this, their structure, and minimum requirements. So meaning, pag ang isang entity gumawa ng isang uh, financial statement, pag nag-prepare ng financial statement, at a minimum kailangan po sundin ang mga provisions ng PAS 1. Okay? Scope according to part... Scope, according to paragraph 2, an entity shall apply PAS 1 in preparing and presenting general purpose financial statements in accordance with Philippine Financial Reporting Standards or PFRS. Okay? So therefore, uh, pag gumagawa po ng mga financial statements, kailangan in accordance of those applicable financial reporting standards. Okay? Uh, PAS 1 and PFRS or sa madaling sabi, kailangan accordance with up. Okay? Financial statements. Okay. Na mention na that uh, PAS 1 is for presentation of financial statements. So how can we prepare financial statements if we do not know what are financial statements? So to define, financial statements are structured representation of the pri of the financial position and financial performance of an entity. These are financial reports that are being prepared by an entity every accounting period to provide information of the, on the operations of on the results of the operations. So meaning kung ano ang mga nangyari sa buong taon dyan sa uh, assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses ng isang kumpanya. Okay? Or sa madaling sabi, the whole operation ng isang company. Okay? Dini describe dun sa financial statements. Of course, describe in terms of accounts and the related balances. Okay? Objective and purpose. The objective of financial statement it's, is to provide uh, information about financial position, financial performance, and cash flow of an entity. Okay? Meaning, it uh, set out information. Okay? It provides information about the asset liabilities, equity, income and expenses including gains and losses, contribution from and distribution to owners in their capacity as owners and cash flows of an entity. Okay? So lahat po ng elements na applicable. Okay? Lahat po ng elements of financial statement ginagawa po ng uh, information. Lahat po ng information doon, transactions, changes, nilalagay po dyan sa financial statement. Okay? Yan po ang objective ng financial statement. To provide information about the assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses, including gains and losses. And also contributions to, uh, contributions from, uh, and distribution to owners, and the cash flows. Okay? Including also the necessary notes okay there's necessary there are necessary notes that are to be disclosed in the so-called notes to financial statements okay the complete set of financial statements are as follows from statement of financial position down to third statement of financial state 
third statement of financial position as provided in PAS 1. Okay? So statement of financial position, also known as balance sheet, it provides information of an entity's assets, liabilities, and equity or capital as of the end of accounting period. Take note the purpose of financial position is to provide information of the entity's assets, liabilities, and equity. Okay? And the clue phrase there is as of the end of accounting period, meaning all the accounts and the balances presented in statement of financial position are cumulative. Okay? Because as of the end of accounting period, meaning from period to another. Okay? Statement of comprehensive income. Statement of comprehensive income provides information about an entity's financial performance for a current reporting period. Okay? Showing the profit or loss and the other comprehensive income for that uh, concerned accounting period. Okay? For that current accounting period. So it encompasses both the profit or loss statement and other comprehensive income statement. So don't be confused. When we say comprehensive income, okay, we mean the profit or loss and the other comprehensive income already. So statement of comprehensive income, two statements. Profit or loss statement and compre other comprehensive income statement. Okay? Statement of changes in equity. Statement of changes in equity provides information about the changes in the entity's capital structure or equity structure uh, during a current accounting period. So all uh, changes in the equity accounts, including the reporting of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, are stated in changes in equity. Okay? Statement of cash flows, it provides the information about the cash inflows and outflows of an entity which resulted to the net change in the balance of cash for a ca current accounting period. So therefore, all the cash receipts and disbursements are being uh, reported there. Okay? Uh, quick overview for statement of cash flows. Uh, the components of cash flows are classified into three major activities. We have the operating, investing, and financing. Okay? Notes to financial statements, basically this provides a significant disclosures and notations, okay? comprising the summary of accounting policies and other explanations related to the accounts and balances presented in the financial statements. Okay? So it includes narrative, narrative and descriptive information of all okay? what has uh, been presented in those specific financial statements. Comparative information okay, or comparative FS. It is a financial statement, presentation, okay, comparison of current period and previous periods financial statements. Okay? So third statement of financial position, okay, the rule is at, as at the beginning of the preceding period okay, as an addition to a minimum comparative information with respect to restrict with respect to restrict with respect to retrospective application of accounting policy and other Restatement of items in the financial statements. Okay? In order for us to prepare okay, financial statements, PAS 1 provides the following principle. Okay? First, fair presentation and compliance with PFRS or IFRS. Financial statements shall be prepared in a way that it presents fairly the statement of financial position financial performance, and cash flows of an entity. Preparation requires faithful representation of all transactions, meaning okay, no more, no less of those transactions. All changes that have happened in the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expenses okay, should be disclosed and presented in the financial statements. Okay? And it should be in adherence Okay, in adherence as much as possible to an applicable accounting and reporting standard. Going concern, financial statements shall be prepared and presented in the viewpoint of continuing operations in the future. Okay, unless the entity intends to stop and liquidate the business. Meaning, the financial statement should be prepared okay, in the viewpoint that we're going to continue the operations in the next succeeding years or succeeding accounting periods. Okay? Accrual basis of accounting, 
general rule okay, of accounting, financial statements should be presented in an accrual basis. Meaning, financial statements shall be prepared in a way that it follows the standard basis of reporting okay, prescribed by the conceptual framework. Okay? What does it mean when it satisfies the definition of and recognition of assets, liabilities, income, and expenses? Okay? So therefore, we are referring here with accrual basis, recognizing for accounts receivable, um, accounts payable, accrued income, and accrued expenses, and other deferrals. Okay? Materiality and aggregation, financial statements shall be prepared in a way that it presents separately material items for both similar and dissimilar nature unless, unless considered immaterial. Okay? Meaning, the assets that have as material in amount okay, or other line items that are um, material in amount should be presented uh, separately. Okay? Offsetting, all items of assets and liabilities for income and expenses shall not be offset unless required or at least permitted by an applicable BFRS or IFRS. Example of that is the presentation of your deferred tax and deferred tax liability of your deferred taxes. An example of that is the presentation of your deferred taxes. Okay? Deferred tax benefit should be presented separately as an asset. Okay? And deferred tax liability should be separately presented as part of the liabilities. Okay? They should not be offset. Frequency of reporting, the complete set of financial statements including comparative information should at least be prepared annually. Okay? Unless there is a change in the coverage of financial reporting, okay? uh, that should be disclosed. Okay? The reason for that should be disclosed, the reason, the reason for the change, and uh, also comparability of amounts shall also be disclosed if there are changes. Okay, and the comparability of those amounts presented. Comparative information, okay, at least at a minimum, two statement of financial positions, comprehensive income, and two separate profit or loss if necessary, two cash flows, two changes in equity, and related notes. Okay? All amounts from preceding financial statements shall be restated to reflect the current situation. So comparative information, the concept is is that okay you are presenting both financial statements of the current and from prior years okay at least the immediate prior year okay consistent consistency of presentation financial statements shall be prepared in a consistent manner from period to period meaning all the accounting policies should be uh, applied consistently in preparing financial statements no matter what the, uh, the changes happened in the uh, application of accounting policies, it should be um, applied consistently. For example, we have two policies, policy A and policy B. Uh, a policy A is applicable for the first five years. Then after five years, there is a change in accounting policy. Okay? And policy A is no longer applicable and policy B will... Um, take over therefore policy B will should be will be and should be consistently applied throughout the succeeding accounting periods so therefore even though there is a change in the accounting policy consistency shall be applied so therefore um, application of uh, accounting policy A is consistent for the first five period Okay, and the next accounting periods, the consistency of application of um, policy B. Okay, identification of financial statements. Financial statements shall be prepared in a way okay, that it should be uh, clearly identified from other documents or information in the same uh, published document. So therefore, it must be um, uh, with a heading. Okay? It should be identified, it should be named that this is a financial statement. 
Okay? If it's separately been prepared, it should be identified. Or if that financial statement is part of an example, an annual report, which is a one document preparation, it should be identified that this portion pertains to financial statements. Okay? So, kailangan dapat merong identification, may consistency. Okay? At ang ating frequency ng pag-report, kailangan at least annual sa isang buong taon. Okay? So, other presentation requirements or disclosures of past one. Okay? For statement of financial position, sabi dyan, an entity preparing its statement of financial position as a minimum should provide adequate disclosures on the further subclassification of line items. Okay? As a minimum, property, plant, and equipment okay, shall be subclassified in accordance with Pass 16 okay, if necessary, such as land, building, machinery, and equipment. Usually, this subclassification is being disclosed in the notes to financial statements. If the one-line item, property, plant, and equipment is already been presented in the statement of financial position, the subclassification should be presented and disclosed in the notes to financial statements. Or, if the manner of presentation so requires that land, building, machinery, and equipment should be presented in the statement of financial position, such should be disclosed also in the notes to financial statements. The reason for presenting that kind of presentation, of subclassification. Okay? Also, we have trade and other receivables, into receivables on trade customers, those from related parties or affiliates, then accrued receivables, and etc. Okay? Inventories in accordance with PAS 2, such as merchandise, raw materials, work in process, or finished goods, etc. Meaning, it should adhere okay, with PAS 2 depending on the uh, concern of the entity. Okay? What type of business concern is that? Is it merchandising, manufacturing, or a service concern? Okay? Provisions related to employee benefits and other items. Cash and cash equivalents into cash in hand, cash in banks, cash funds, and other items of qualified cash equivalents. Trade and other payables into payables from, uh, I mean, payables to trade uh, suppliers, those payables to related parties or affiliates, accruals and deferrals. Equity accounts, capital and reserves into paid in capital, okay, and the additional paid in capital or the share premium, retained earnings and other items of reserves and appropriations, okay. For statement of comprehensive income, okay, um, According to paragraphs 85 to 98, when preparing statement of comprehensive income, an entity shall present additional line items, headings, and subtotals when presentation is relevant to understanding of an entity's financial performance. Meaning, if uh, there is a need to have an additional line item in order for uh, the statement of comprehensive income to be more understandable for the readers, then uh, presentation of those line items shall be done, okay, or necessary, okay? Not present any items of income and expenses as extraordinary items. It is specifically stated there in the past one. Recognize all items of income and expense in a period, okay, in profit or loss unless required or otherwise permitted by an applicable IFRS. So therefore, as long as applicable, all the income and expenses or all the revenues and expenses should be um, presented in the profit or loss statement. Otherwise, if it's not uh, if it's not um, applicable or required by a, a PFRS, then do not present those items. Or at a minimum, or at least if they are not applicable to be presented in statement of profit or loss, then present it in other comprehensive income. Okay, then. Disclose the amount of income tax relating to other comprehensive in income items, including reclassification adjustment. So therefore, um, other than the profit or loss items, okay, other comprehensive income items should be okay, um, disclosed that there are tax effects to them. Okay? 
disclose separately the nature and amounts of material items of income and expense. Okay? If an item of income is uh, different from another item of income, then separate presentation. So with expenses. Okay? Other disclosures for items of income and expenses are as follows. Okay? Write down some inventories to net realizable value okay? or PPS to recoverable amounts including any reversal of those um, write-downs or impairment. Okay? Restructuring of activities and any related reversals of cost of restructuring if there are any. Okay? Actually, these um, restructuring activities are so rare in practice. Okay? Should, there, should there be restructuring of activities, okay? uh, reversals and other restructuring items should be disclosed. Okay. Disposal of property, plant, and equipment, and also for investments. Okay, any gain, any realizable, any realized gains or losses um, related to that disposal. Okay, also portion of the discontinued operation should be presented in profit or loss, and litigation settlements and other reverses of provisions should be disclosed. For statement of changes in equity, according to paragraph 79, in preparing report in relation to changes in equity, the entity shall disclose the following. Okay? For each class of share capital, meaning applicable to either, okay, to either preference or ordinary shares, the entity shall disclose the number of shares authorized, okay, meaning kung magkano yung inauthorized na, in, na pwedeng i-issue na shares ng isang company. The number of shares issued whether fully paid or not fully paid. Meaning, if there are a subscription, full payment, okay, partial payment, regardless of status should be uh, disclosed. Par value per share or that the shares have not, uh, have no par value, then state the stated par value. Disclose. Rather, disclose the stated par value. Okay? Reconciliation of number of outstanding shares for the current period. Okay? If there are any changes or if there are any reacquisition of shares, then that should be disclosed. The rights, preferences, and restrictions attaching to that class, including restrictions on the distribution of dividends and the repayment of capital, meaning all the rights that are um, applicable for that class of share should be uh, disclosed, including preferences and restrictions, if any. Okay? And also, related to that share, if they are entitled to distribution of dividends or liquidations. Okay? Meaning the repayment of capital. Shares in the entity held by the entity or by affiliate entities, meaning the ownership interest of an entity from another entity. Shares reserved for issue under options and contracts for the sale of shares including terms and amounts and a description of the nature and purpose of each reserve within the entity. For example, why did a company come up with reserve for depreciation, reserve for surplus, okay? reserve for um, uh, plant expansions or other reserves? Okay? According also to paragraph 80, the uh, entities okay, without share capital such as partnership or trust shall disclose the information that are equivalent what is stated in paragraph 79. Okay? At least equivalent, showing changes during the period in, category, in each category of equity interest, rights, preferences, and restrictions attaching to category of equity interest. Okay? So meaning, okay? Uh, if an entity like partnership and trust do not have uh, share capital, at the very least, what is stated in paragraph 79 should be disclosed in equivalent manner. Okay, Not necessarily that they will disclose number of shares. No. Just an equivalent, um, equivalent uh, information. For example, if the ownership in a, in a share capital entity Okay, are presented as in the manner of share capital, then in the partnership, it should relate on the changes in the partner's capital accounts. 
okay or any other um, liquidation of capital okay or withdrawal in its equivalent in the partnership is the drawings or the withdrawal of the partners okay So for statement of cash flows, all requirements okay, set out by PAS 7 for the presentation and disclosure of cash, in, cash flow information, particularly to the components of cash and cash equivalents and the reconciliation of the amounts presented in the statement of cash flows with the equivalent items reported in the statement of financial position. So therefore, all the items okay, that composes the cash and cash equivalents and the related reconciliation okay, should be should should be presented and disclosed okay related to statement of cash flows okay and also related to those items equivalent in the statement of financial position so therefore there should be a reflection of the items what is in the statement of financial position should be reconciled and disclosed in the statement of cash flows okay um the policies adapted in determining composition of cash and cash equivalents, including any effect of any changes in those accounting policies and the significant cash and cash equivalent balances held by the entity that are not allowed for use by the group, including any commentary, uh, any commentary of the management to those balances. Okay? For other account, uh, accounting policy disclosures, okay, all significant accounting, accounting policies or summary thereof that provides information regarding the measurement basis used in preparing the financial statements, uh, usually referring to measurement basis of uh, each line items okay, for cash and cash equivalents, trade and other receivables, property, plant and equipment, and other assets liabilities. Okay? Then the other accounting policies used that are relevant to, an to the understanding of the financial statements, meaning those accounting policies that would provide a, a smoother understanding for the users. Okay. So those are the basic concepts embodied in the uh, Philippine Accounting Standards 1. Now for the elements of financial statements, our next focus Okay. We have already discussed earlier uh, financial statements. Okay, So to come up with financial statements, we should be familiar with the elements of financial statements. At the very least, we have three major elements. Okay, The assets, liabilities, and equity. Okay, As for the assets and liabilities, they are subclassified into current or non-current. And for the equity, we have the income. And expenses okay so to discuss we have first assets a okay? the definition of an asset it is a present economic resource owned and controlled by entity it is a resource either tangible or intangible okay meaning uh, whether it has physical substance or not as long as it is a present economic resource controlled by the entity owned and controlled it should provide potential economic benefits for that entity okay according to pass one okay an asset is considered current if an entity expects to realize the asset sell the asset or consume it within the normal operation okay unless if it's beyond the normal operation then it's non-current okay if an entity holds uh, the asset for trading purposes then it is current Otherwise, it is non-current if it is for non-trading activities. If an entity expects to realize that asset within 12 months or one year, then it is current. Otherwise, if beyond one year or 12 months, it should be non-current. Okay? And specifically, if it is cash and cash equivalents that is unrestricted as to usage. So it should be stressed that it should be unrestricted to usage. So meaning if it is restricted or if not available for use, then that cash and cash equivalent items should be part of non-current uh, assets. Okay, And also under non-current asset, for assets that are long-term in nature, tangible okay, properties and other intangible assets are part of your non-current asset. Okay? 
Examples of current assets, we have cash and cash equivalents generally. Then trade receivables, okay? Um, inventories, prepayments, and trading securities. For non-current assets, we have your property plan and equipment, long-term receivables, okay? intangible assets, non-trading investment, and investment properties. Liability. Okay? For liabilities, okay, a liability is defined as a present obligation arising from past events, the settlement of which will require an outflow of resources embodying economic benefits. So therefore, it is the uh, separate reflection of the asset. Okay? So, under pass 1, it is considered current if an entity expects to settle the liability within normal operations. Okay? Unless, if it is beyond, okay, it should be considered non-current. Okay? If an entity hold, okay, holds the liability for trading purposes, then it is uh, current. Otherwise, if non-trading, then it is non-current. If an entity expects to settle the liability within 12 months okay, or one year from the reporting period, period then it is current. Okay? If beyond or more than 12 months or one year, then non-current. And also, if and only if an entity does not have any okay, unconditional right, okay? unconditional right to uh, defer the payment for the liability of at least 12 months, then it is current otherwise it is non-current example of current liabilities we have trade payables or your account payables then accrued expenses and unearned revenues okay for non-current we have long-term debts okay or long-term portion of your liabilities such as bonds and notes payable and we have the deferred taxes okay deferred tax liabilities are specifically provided that it should be um part of the non-current liabilities even if um, the settlement of the portion of that deferred tax liabilities are within 12 months or normal operations still is considered part of the non-current liabilities okay so for the equity or capital okay actually equity or capital is the residual interest in the assets of an entity after deducting all of its liabilities Okay, the classification as to current or non-current is not applicable for this um, element. Okay, so your equity encompasses all changes in the assets and liabilities, primarily on the contributions coming from the owners of the business. Okay, so changes primarily from the uh, owners. Okay. Um, it also encompasses all changes in the assets as a result of normal operations referring to your income earned and expenses incurred. Therefore, changes okay, associated in your statement of comprehensive income. Okay? Your comprehensive income are being close to your uh, statement of equity. Okay? An income is recognized as an increase to assets or decrease in liabilities that result in increase in equity. Okay, other than contribution from owners. Okay? It encompasses all revenues from regular activities and gain from incidental activities. Examples, we have sales revenue, income from rent, royalties, down to service fees. Then expenses, expenses, uh, an expense, okay? uh, recognized as a decrease in asset or increase in liability with an uh, effect of decrease in equity other than distribution to owners. It encompasses all expenses incurred from regular activities and other losses coming from incidental activities of, the net, of an entity. Okay? Examples, we have cost of goods sold, salaries and wages, depreciation, amortization, utilities, and taxes. Okay? So that it, that's it for the basic concept of your um, elements of financial statements. Now that we have already... Um, discussed the elements of financial statements okay and we have also uh, discussed the uh, financial statements including the complete set of financial statement we're now going to focus on the main okay first 
two main financial statements that should be prepared by an entity starting from profit or loss statement. Then later the other one, the statement of financial position. So again, profit or loss statement as a component of your statement of comprehensive income, it recognizes the income and expenses okay, related uh, to a specific accounting period. So start, uh, starting with the profit or loss statement, okay, definition and uh, purpose, okay, um, let's start first with the statement of comprehensive income. A comprehensive income is a report that provides information about the financial performance of an entity showing both the net income or net loss in relation to its ordinary activities or continuing operations and other comprehensive income or loss from other activities that results, okay? The results of which are not reported in profit or loss statement. Therefore, the component of our statement of comprehensive income encompasses both the income and uh, net income and net loss, okay? Reported in your profit or loss statement and the other comprehensive income or loss reported in other comprehensive income statement okay the method of presentation of our uh, statement of comprehensive income it could either be separate statement or single statement when we say single statement we start first with the profit or loss statement showing the net income or loss for the current period then followed by the comprehensive income statement okay wherein we start with the net income or loss for the accounting period then done with the other comprehensive income items okay then single statement when we say single statement regardless of the item if uh, related to uh, profit or loss or other comprehensive income statement should be prepared in a one statement manner or single statement manner okay so it is up to uh, the entity uh, on how we're going to present the uh, financials uh, how are we how are they going to present the statement of comprehensive income okay but I prepare uh, no but I prefer a separate statement okay other comprehensive income statement okay uh, definition and purpose it it is a statement or report as a major part or component of statement of con comprehensive income that provides information about the financial performance of an entity showing the other comprehensive income or loss from other activities that result the results of which are not reported in profit or loss statement meaning all the items that are not applicable to be presented in profit or loss statement are being presented in statement about uh, other comprehensive income statement okay uh, the components that are being presented in other comprehensive income statement we have at least two okay the items that can be reclassified subsequently to profit or loss statement and those that are not being reclassified subsequently to profit or loss statement okay so for items that are recyclable we have it gains or losses from translating financial statements in uh, of a foreign operation and unrealized gains or losses on derivative contracts designated as cash flow hedge and unrealized gains or losses on debt investment measured at FBTOCI. Okay? Then for items that are not recyclable, we have it unrealized gains or losses on equity investments measured at FBTOCI. Okay, then change in revaluation surplus, okay, or the revaluation surplus itself, or the surplus that relates to revaluation of assets, remeasurement of uh, defined benefit plan, okay, we have the remeasurement gains or losses, okay, so uh, last we have gains or losses attributable to credit risk of a financial liability designated as FVD PL or fair value through profit or loss okay so moving on with the profit or loss statement or statement of profit or loss the main highlight of this discussion we have it um, uh, 
a statement or a report as a major part or component of statement of comprehensive income showing the net income or loss of an entity in relation to its ordinary activities or continuing operations. Okay? So for the components and scope, um, it provides information of all income earned and expenses incurred for a specific accounting period showing the sales revenue, okay? cost of sales or cost of goods sold, the gross profit, other income including other gains and holding gains from investment in FBTPL or fair value through profit or loss, operating expenses, okay? selling administrative and other expenses, including interest and other losses, holding losses from investments in FBTPL and taxes, and net income or net loss for the current period. Okay? Methods of presentation. Okay? So for um, profit or loss statement, it could either be presented uh, under, under capital maintenance approach or transactional or traditional approach. Under maintenance approach, a okay, capital maintenance, maintenance approach, there is income if the ending capital balance of an entity is greater than the capital balance beginning. Okay? Otherwise, it is a loss. Okay? If the ending capital balance is less than the beginning capital balance. Okay? So, we're just going to adjust okay, our capital balances then compare it with the beginning and ending uh, balances okay? or amounts. Okay? Which is which okay? will report income or loss depending if uh, the ending capital balance is greater than or less than the beginning capital balance. Then transactional or traditional approach, okay? uh, this is more common, okay? rather it is most common. Okay? Because it is in conformity of generally accepted accounting principles. Okay? There is income if, there, uh, uh, if the reported revenue okay, is greater than expenses. Otherwise, there is a loss okay, if the revenue is less than expenses. Okay? So why in conformity with GAAP? Because we are presenting a specific line item of revenue or income and uh, expenses. Okay? So we've been we've been mentioning about income and expenses. So uh, let's define income and expenses. So for income, there is an income if there is an increase in economic benefits. Okay, that is a basic rule in accounting. An income is recognized as an increase to assets or decrease in liabilities that resulted to an increase in equity. Okay. Other than contribution from owners. And uh, income encompasses all revenues and gains. When we say revenues, we mean those items coming from regular activities okay, or normal operations. Then gains, those from incidental activities. Okay, example of uh, revenue is your sales revenue. An example of gain is your uh, holding gains or the gains on sale. Okay? Uh, there is... Uh, uh, there should be a, a significant, okay, significant um, distinction with revenues and gains, okay, because revenues are uh, normal operations such as uh, sales revenues, or if that is a servicing concerned entity, we have um, fees, okay, and for gains we mean those. Uh, other income, okay, not related to reg regular activities such as holding gains or uh, holding gains from investments, and also we have the gains on gains on sale of properties and other um, assets. Now we have uh, expenses, okay. There is an expense and there is a decrease in economic benefits, okay. So good example for that is the recognition of your depreciation. Okay, so an expense is recognized as a decrease in asset or increase in liabilities that resulted to a decrease in equity other than distribution to owners. It encompasses all expenses and losses. Okay, expenses, okay, when we say expenses, generally we mean those coming from regular activities. 
Then other losses are from incidental activities. Okay? So each uh, um, encompassing items, so mirror of the other. So revenues for expenses then gains with other losses. Method of presentation, okay? The presentation of our profit or loss statement or statement of profit or loss depends on the presentation of our expenses. We have functional presentation and natural presentation. When we say functional presentation, profit or loss statement is presented, okay? By way that it shows the functional presentation of the expenses, okay? Showing the cost of goods sold, distribution costs, okay? Administrative expenses, other expenses, finance cost, and income tax expense. Meaning, based on the function, okay? So, all um, selling, okay, and promotion activities are under distribution cost. Other expenses that relates to the administrative functions, we have the administrative expenses, then other expenses or miscellaneous expenses. Those coming with dividends and interest, we have the finance cost. And um, related to government expenses, we have the income tax expense. And those related to general manufacturing or um, general operations, okay, we have uh, the cost of goods sold. But under the natural presentation, we present the income statement that shows okay, the nature of those uh, items. Okay, of expenses showing the item of net purchases sales commission advertising expense down to income tax expense uh, generally uh, functional presentation and natural presentation both are similar with at least three items the other expenses finance costs and income tax expense okay so example okay of format for for preparation of profit or loss statement showing function and nature of expenses or functional presentation and natural presentation, we have it there. Okay? So I leave you I leave to you, okay, rather. I leave to you the, no, the judgment on how to appreciate the difference between the functional presentation and the uh, natural presentation of profit or loss statement. Okay? Either of the uh, approach or the method of presentation, the net income of uh, for the year should be the same. Okay, should be the same. Okay, so at least if we're going to compare functional presentation and natural presentation, we can at least compare it by uh, simple item. Okay, the presence of the cost of goods sold account. Okay. Competition of your cost of goods sold depends on the nature or the business concern, okay? So, for merchandising concerned entities, okay? So, we use the merchandise inventory account. So, merchandise inventory beginning plus the net purchases there. We have the competition, the net purchases. Then, combine the two, we have the cost of goods available for sale. Then less the merchandise inventory ending, we can have the cost of good sold already. Okay? So it's like a, a less complicated um, way of computing cost of goods sold. That is for merchandising. But for manufacturing, okay, um, we focus okay, on the material items okay, of inventories and other expenses that are applicable during the uh, manufacturing process okay but on your uh, on your part our focus mainly is on the merchandising portion okay so for manufacturing the raw materials beginning add the raw materials purchased then we can have the raw materials available for use less the raw materials ending we can have the total materials used add labor and manufacturing overhead we can have the total manufacturing cost. Then add the work in process, inventories, beginning, okay, or goods still in process. We can have the total cost of goods to be manufactured, less the works in work in process ending. Then we can have the uh, cost of goods manufactured, 
then add it with the finished goods beginning to arrive with the cost of goods available for sale then less the finished goods finished goods ending we can have the cost of good sold okay so let's have an example for this one uh, preparation of your uh, profit or loss statement okay uh, for the year end of December 31 2019 Okay, we are being required to prepare the nature and function of expense method. Okay, um, per, uh, presentation of your profit or loss okay, with supporting notes. Assuming 30% uh, 30% tax rate. The 30% tax rate is referring to income tax. Okay, so we have uh, from sales of 7,800,000 down to loss on expropriation of land of 90,000. Okay. So to prepare for your statement of uh, profit or loss, okay, under the both natural and functional method, okay, for na nature of expense, uh, okay, so let me have a a uh, slight correction for this one mm -hmm. Okay, for the function of expense approach, we have there the presence of your cost of goods sold. Okay. Um, wait, wait a minute. This uh, this should be uh, seven million eight hundred. This should be seven million eight hundred. Okay, so slight corrections, lang guys. Okay. Okay, down there. So we have profit for the year of uh, one million two hundred seventy-seven five hundred. Then for the competition, oh uh, wait, that, that's correct. It's seven million five hundred. The competition of the net sales revenue, pala. Okay. Okay, so we have net sales revenue, we have the gross profit, 3,270,000, then down there, okay, to pro, uh, profit for the year. So in contrast with the uh, nature of expense, you cannot see there the, ano, the cost of goods sold, okay, but still it can be computed naman, okay. So for the... Okay. The notes for each function uh, method. That's it. So we have for the function of expense, we are actually computing for the cost of goods sold. Okay, computing for total other operating income, total selling expenses. Okay total administrative expenses, total other operating expenses, and for the income tax expense. Okay, so for the uh, presentation of the financial statement, you can see there, okay, the cost of goods sold, the presence of cost of goods sold, then other operating income, selling expenses, and administrative expenses, and other operating expenses. Uh, it's really um, showing the function of expense. Okay, so for example, uh, selling expenses we can see in the notes 
uh, note 14 that we have freight out sales commission and uh, store depreciation okay selling expense then for the administrative uh, expenses okay note 15 we have there the office salaries officer salaries and depreciation of uh, the office okay so for the nature of expense approach again we don't have cost of goods sold here but we can have here the computation of your uh, net purchases increase in inventory freight uh, uh, we have here the freight out the, and the sales commission the, dep the competition of the depreciation and the uh, other operating expenses so for the notes Okay, for purchases we have note 13 okay so net purchases down there okay 5 million 200 plus 50,000 minus 140 minus 480 so we have 4 million 630,000 then for the increase of your inventory okay we have the difference of the beginning inventory and the ending inventory okay so 400,000 so for the depreciation we have the total of the depreciation store and the depreciation office Okay, so we have 440,000 and for the other operating expenses, we have the total of 305,000, okay? So that's it, the difference of the function of expense and nature of expense approach. Now for the uh, last focus, we have the statement of financial position, okay? So we're done with um, profit or loss statement. So we have now um, uh, concepts and the preparation of statement of financial position. Okay. So for the description, let me edit this one again. So for statement of financial position, it is a statement or report that provides information about the financial position of an entity showing uh, balances of each account or line item of assets, liabilities, and equity or capital accounts as of the, cur as of the current period of reporting. Okay? So the scope or and components, okay? adjusted balances okay? as of the current period, the balances or of the line item of assets liability and equity the forms of presentation okay we have it report form or account form okay for the report form the asset liability and equity uh, accounts are presented in a downward sequence showing first the assets followed by the liabilities then uh, last by the uh, equity accounts then for the account form we have it the it's like following the rule of the basic accounting equation or the rule of debit and credit okay on which assets are presented on the left side and the liabilities and equity on the right side so, so to illustrate we have yung report form like that okay three layer square or three layer presentation but for the account form we have the uh, three sections okay so on the left side we have the assets and the right side liabilities and equity for the account form but for the report form assets on top liabilities in the middle then equity on uh, uh, the bottom part okay so this is an example of the report form of preparation of statement of financial position okay so first showing the assets classified to current and non-current then we have the total assets. Then for liabilities and shareholders equity, okay, there is a uh, uh, actually the company uh, has the choice to present liabilities and shareholders equity in one combined uh, uh, portion. Okay, so liabilities and shareholders equity, okay, 
then liabilities classified to current and non-current, then the bottom part, the shareholders' equity accounts, e, the total of the total liabilities and shareholders' equity should be balanced with the total assets. Okay? So, okay, that's an example, okay, of an amount, uh, financial position with amounts, okay? So, the balance of the total assets is 1,650,000, it should be 1,000, so 1, uh, 1,650 times 1,000 is 1,650,000. Then, for total liabilities and shareholders' equity, it should also be 1,650,000. Then, for the account form, Okay. On the left side, we have the current assets and the non-current assets showing the total assets. Then for the left side, we have the current liabilities, non-current liabilities, and the shareholders' equity accounts. Okay. Showing total of the liabilities and shareholders' equity. So this is an example okay, of a statement of financial position with amounts. Okay. So it's again in thousands. So the total assets and the total liabilities and equity with the shareholders' equity should be the same at 1,650,000. Okay? So that's it. That's all for our discussion for past one. Okay? So for our past one. So I hope you have learned something in this discussion. So that's all. Thank you. Have a good day.